Good morning to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion. It is Memorial Day, May 25th, 2020. I'm on the road doing this video earlier than normal. I guess this is a good time of day to do it. Usually I try to sleep in and then do the video later in the day, but whatever. I'm on the road. I'll explain why in just a few minutes. So let's get on with it, taking a look at what's going on out there. We will start off with a look at sea surface temperature anomalies. This last updated on May the 23rd, so it's just a couple of days out of date, but that's okay. It's still pretty accurate. You see our developing La Nina out here in the tropical Pacific, and wait until I show you this on a graph in just a moment. These cold anomalies uh, starting to set up out here, and that is going to have a lot of implications for the hurricane season ahead as well as overall weather patterns for the globe. Think of this as a giant thermostat out here throughout this region. And when you take the thermostat and cool it off, that's a large area of the Pacific that's cooling. Or if you heat it when you get an El Nino, you, you get all kinds of different impacts. We are most concerned with how this cooling out here will affect the Atlantic hurricane season and to some extent even the eastern Pacific hurricane season over here. Uh, but we do continue to see this cooling off, whereas in the Atlantic, for the most part, the main development region and really the tropics as a whole, warmer than average with colder anomalies up here in the North Atlantic. Uh, so the, the heat seems to be concentrating here south of about 30 degrees latitude, which is a little bit wider spread than normal. I mean, in the most active seasons, you see a majority of the heat concentrated right in here, south of 20 degrees latitude. But the fact that we're not seeing warmth all up and down longitudinally uh, means that it's still, it's, it's pretty much concentrated. You understand that? If it's, ev if it's warm everywhere, you don't have an imbalance. And the warmth seems to be concentrating, for the most part, uh, again, on average, 30 degrees latitude is about right there. So south of there is where most of the warmth is. And that should focus the upward motion, the instability, and give us a pretty active hurricane season ahead. No surprises there. We've seen this coming for several weeks to perhaps months. And now we have to take that to heart and be ready for it. So look at this here from Tropical Tidbits, graphically plotted the Nino 3.4 index, this is just a region of the Pacific, and it really fell off the table here lately. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, well, not really. We saw it coming, but it's, it's quite remarkable. That's what I should say. And this graphic uh, indicating, what is that, minus 4.424, so almost a half a degree Celsius below the long-term average there in the tropical Pacific and just to give you an idea of where this is, it's roughly the Nino 3-4 area is roughly this area right through here, plus or minus a few miles. That's the area we're talking about. And so if you were to measure it and plot it graphically, that's what you would see. So almost a half a degree Celsius below the long-term average, headed towards that La Nina threshold. It'll be a few months before the Climate Prediction Center deems it a La Nina, but the processes are already in motion. When you take that heat out, you start to change things, and it's going to make for a more favorable Atlantic hurricane season. All right, if you're headed out to the beaches today for Memorial Day, uh, do so safely, and if you're going to do it in this area, you better bring a wetsuit, because <laughs> the water temperatures are pretty cold. 11, 12, 13 Celsius, you know, so we're talking 60s if you're lucky, right? 50s to 60s Fahrenheit. More to the south, though, down along the Carolina coast, not too bad, especially South Carolina, uh, the low country, down to Georgia, and, of course, the eastern coast of Florida. you got to get out into the Gulf Stream to really appreciate and enjoy the warmer waters that are closer to 80 degrees. You know, it's late May. It's only the 25th. We still have a couple weeks to go before the water temperatures really start to come up. But the sun angle getting stronger every day as we approach the uh, summer solstice and the maximum uh, incoming solar radiation. And then it kind of starts to back off, but there's a lag. And so water temperatures continue to increase until September, generally. 
Gulf of Mexico, warmer overall. It's a more closed-in body of water, so it's easier to warm this up. Uh, for the most part, except for this area right here that I'm highlighting in red, and this one little island right here of cool, most of the Gulf, I say cool, is 26 Celsius. And folks, that's the magic number. I, I do this in Celsius and Fahrenheit. 26 degrees Celsius is typically the threshold of water temperatures that you need to give off enough moisture and heat, and latent heat especially, um, in, in to create tropical cyclones. 26 Celsius or about 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 79, 80 degrees, something like that. And so that's what we're looking at here. And that's what these contours show. These are in degrees Celsius. So, you know, just outlining it here, this is your 26 Celsius isotherm line of equal temperature right there. So the Mississippi, Alabama, Gulf Coast, all the way around to Texas, 26 to 27 Celsius, Galveston Bay, nice and warm. The water is right off of Louisiana, 27 Celsius. And this will just go up quicker, quicker, <laughs> quicker and quicker, uh, quickly and quicker over the next several weeks, of course. And the Gulf is always warm enough for intense hurricanes. But you guys be careful out there. Please refer to, uh, if you're at the beaches, all right, you know, I appreciate you guys. I care about you. That's why I do this. Um, weather.gov. Okay, you're going to the beach. Just do me a favor. Put in weather.gov. Put in the zip code of the area that you're going to or the name of the town if you don't know the zip code. Gulf Shores, Alabama, Galveston, Texas, whatever the case may be. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Put that in in the little search bar under weather.gov and look for any hazardous weather outlooks, beach hazard statement, anything like that. Anything in red is an alert and you should be paying attention to that. Red flag, um, at the beach, you know, for dangerous surf conditions, rip currents. We need you back because if you can't watch the video because you died, that doesn't do anybody any good. Seriously, so be careful out there. All right, on to current conditions. What's going on? Well, the Eastern Pacific trying to develop its first name storm. We've already had one depression out here uh, a few weeks ago that never made it to name storm status. Now we have this area. South of the Central American coast and the extreme southeastern Pacific, 40% chance of development. Over the next five days, some energy is coming in in the form of this convectively coupled Kelvin wave, this wind shift that's going to kind of set up down here, some westerly winds coming in, uh, going up against the easterly trades, and you just get this general turning, and vorticity gets enhanced, moisture, all kinds of things. It's like a Red Bull you know, to perk you up a little bit. Well, the, these convectively coupled Kelvin waves do the same kind of thing in nature. Eh, at least that's a simple way to put it. But this region looks to get active over the next few days, and I expect that we will see a tropical cyclone develop out of this and head up towards Central America somewhere down here. So Guatemala, El Salvador, and this area along the southern part of the Yucatan Peninsula bordering down to the Pacific. You need to be watching this carefully, as I do think we're going to get a tropical cyclone to develop over the next few days. All right, and we can see that a little bit on the satellite imagery here. This is the area that we're focusing on. Again, only a 40% chance right now of development, but this energy is starting to move in. You're going to see more of a percolating effect of the clouds and more organization in the days to come. A few other interesting features. There's a little swirly right off the... Uh, well, well offshore of Cape Hatteras, nothing to worry about there. This is interesting, bringing a lot of rainfall across the Florida Straits, southeast Florida, the east side of the peninsula here, moderate risk of flash flooding today. There is a tropical wave in there, some broad turning, so there is low pressure down there. Uh, if this was August or September, this would probably very easily go on to develop into a tropical storm. You know, it won't surprise me. We've seen these before. Julia in 2016 is a situation. Uh, and there's others where these small systems kind of get in under the radar, so to speak. I mean, that's kind of a misnomer because we do have radar down there. Plenty of people watching it. But you know what I'm saying. The global models don't necessarily pick this up. It's not a big energy source like these big tropical waves that will come off later in the year. But don't be surprised, you know, if this develops into maybe a depression and moves its way on up towards the low country of South Carolina 
somewhere around there, heavy rainfall, just kind of nasty conditions over the next few days, and it might even help help to delay the launch of the SpaceX over here at Cape Canaveral. Been reading about that, so that can hinder that a little bit. So we'll watch this small craft, you know, boats out there. Uh, be careful, be mindful of this system. Remember, the weather's always bigger than you. That's the bottom line. It's all about impacts. Not hyping up something that's, I mean, it's not like it's clear air, but do be careful. Be mindful of it. Be aware. And we'll see what happens. It's going to be a rainy, soggy day down there. Upper level low over Texas. We'll get to lower 48 weather here in a moment. Um, and some general storminess out this way, which will be important for what we are doing. And I'll talk about that at the end. So now let's switch from the satellite view here to another satellite view, but this is the vorticity. You know, we see the cloud cover on the uh, preceding satellite shot, but this shows us below the clouds, if you will, the energy. And there's the spin off of Cape Hatteras, weak overall, but there is the vorticity there, some spin in the atmosphere. Here's the energy source and the vorticity signature of our disturbance uh, over Florida, the northwest Bahamas and vicinity. And then a lot of energy here over parts of the Great Plains, especially the southern Great Plains into Texas. And then this will really show the example that I, I love this graphic, I really do, from the University of Wisconsin. We will watch this area very closely over the coming days. And even though I'm traveling, I will do these updates every day this week. Watch how this starts to fill in over the next few days. And we're going to see, you know, somewhere in this vicinity, um, you know, kind of one of these deals here. It's going to get nice and round and concentrated, kind of like we see with this guy right here, uh, but more convection and more energy associated with it. It'll really illustrate how we can use this tool, the vorticity map, at 5,000 feet in the atmosphere. This is the 850 millibar relative vorticity, and 850 millibars is roughly 5,000 feet up. So you'll see this will be a really unique tool that we can use for that. So global models over the next few days from the GFS perspective anyway. Uh, this is the 0Z run from last night to set the stage. Here is our weak overall surface trough and some energy down here associated with the tropical wave that's strung up in the area, hung up, whatever you want to call it, strung out. You know, it is kind of broad, which is good. It's not concentrating. That's the vorticity signature on the, on the model of the area east of Cape Hatteras there. And this is all the energy over the southern plains that we'll take a look at more in a moment. And then the area to watch down here, and I'm going to leave this circled because I think it's most important. Now let's leaf forward, as they say, or edge forward, whatever you call it. Point the pointer on there and move it forward. Um, 48 hours out, 72 hours. Watch down in the circle. Uh, you see it 96 hours. Now we're starting to see some energy here taking shape. Um, the cyclonic look to the wind barbs down here, low pressure trying to develop by day four, and then by day five, it looks like we get pretty much de a developing tropical cyclone down in that region. And there's your trades coming in from the east, this convectively coupled Kelvin wave coming in, and the overall cyclonic nature of the pattern down there. That's the identifier. That's what we look for. You notice, though, nothing really happens over here, but let's back it up. It's kind of small, but it is there. We'll go back out to the current time frame. And now pay attention right in here as we move this out into time. That energy tries right there at about 30 hours or so, trying to pinch off, get a little bit more concentrated uh, east of Canaveral. And like I said, and the Gulf Stream runs through there. So this just might make it to where you, at least you get a little special tropical weather outlook it's a nice sharp trough. You can see that right in there, this inverted trough, kind of uh, a kink in the overall flow. It's a disturbance, if you will, whatever you want to call it. It's easily identified in the way the height lines are skewed there, very sharp, trying to close off. So you never know, but don't worry about it. Not a big deal overall, but there will be impact. Showers, thunderstorms, gusty winds, that kind of thing. And this Memorial Day, Extending into the week ahead, you know, you just need to be real mindful of it and be careful, like I mentioned. Now, for the southern high plains in this area, upper level low, lots of rain, 
no severe threat to speak of, nothing widespread or menacing, but flooding uh, a problem with this energy, again, the warm gulf, fueling this storm system, upper level low over here. So the threat of flooding from the high plains down through the Mississippi, well, close to the Mississippi Valley, um, really straddling the line here. Uh, there's the, I don't know my rivers through there as well as I should. That's the Mississippi River there. But um, basically, the southern high plains, Arkansas, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, western Missouri, you name it, um, the threat of flooding, slow-moving storms, and even down here in Louisiana, let's look at this. When you see that light green along the coast, that's indicative of onshore flow, and a coastal flood advisory is in effect. See how easy this is? You just go in and look, and you click on these things, and they tell you what's up. And you know, flooding of lots, parks, whatever, flood advisory, minor coastal flooding, where, Vermilion, Iberia, St. Mary, etc. Very helpful if you go to weather.gov. I use it all the time. And there you go. So lower 48 weather, kind of active, but no big time severe weather events. There's your rainfall and marine issues with a few thunderstorms in the peninsula and offshore waters of Florida. And then out west, heat. There you go. Maybe the hot weather can help to bake the coronavirus out of existence there. UV. I mean, heck, look at it this way. And I'm no virologist, and we're not going to get off on some tangent on coronavirus because I'm that's not my thing. But UV, sun rays, whatever, can bake your car and dissolve, you know, metals and rubber. Maybe that heat out west will be good for getting rid of, you know, you go outside, get your vitamin D. You know, as long as you use sunscreen and be careful, it certainly can't hurt. But nice and toasty in the desert southwest, take advantage of it, all right? Maybe it could do some good. Um, so I am in Birmingham, Alabama, as we segue into the uh, convective outlook part of this. And we're going to be heading to the Midwest, not for storm chasing necessarily, um, but for some weather balloon testing. And if there are storms... We brought a few of our unmanned cameras to put out and just do some general testing. Today's outlook, highest risk of severe weather down here in Texas, marginal conditions elsewhere. Again, not a major threat overall anywhere in the country. Very small chance of tornadoes, generally speaking. Wind, a little bit higher. Hail, uh, also pretty high uh, when you consider you know, 2% versus significant, which is this black area, uh, southwest Texas here, big hailstorm possible from time to time, so be mindful of that if you live or traveling, live in or traveling through that area. Again, I'm over here in Birmingham on, in Alabama on this graphic, which is right in here, roughly, and uh, if we look at the, let's go back to the categorical, to day two, eh, just general thunderstorms and the greens, day three, even less overall, but then it starts to build in the Intermountain West over here. And by this time, we will have made our way over to Dodge City, Kansas. So now, what are we doing? Well, we got this weather balloon we call Herbie, the hurricane balloon, hurricane research balloon. It is a small payload with a sounding device in it that measures temperature, humidity, altimeter readings, etc., pressure, um, and that does it from the surface of the Earth to the stratosphere, actually 100,000 feet or more. And it's got a couple GoPros on there. We've been doing this for eight years now. Launched at one time in the eye of Hurricane Nate, but that was at night. We got really, really helpful meteorological data that's actually quite fascinating. That is in our 2017 documentary, Tracking the Hurricanes 2017 on Amazon Prime. It's free for Amazon Prime people, so check it out. Um, and uh, we've been testing it ever since. You know, we uh, almost had an opportunity to launch in Category 5 Michael, but it was too dangerous to get into the eye from where we were in Panama City, so we're waiting, still waiting, for that perfect daytime launch. What does it look like? Well, here's what we did last year in Oklahoma. There's me. There's the balloon going up. We'll get rid of the picture of me there. We tested it in Oklahoma last year. This is what it looks like as it goes on up. Um, imagine this in the eye of a hurricane during the day. We go above the eye, go above the hurricane, all the way to the stratosphere, looking down. 
It would really, really be amazing. And we get some meteorological data from the surface of the Earth to way, way higher than any of the planes fly. The Gulf Stream jet flies at 45,000 feet. Um, the Global Hawk, I think, goes to 65,000 or so when it does research missions. The drone, this balloon will go up to 100,000 feet or more. And that's where we are right here at about 101,000 feet last year over Oklahoma. So this is a neat project. It is crowdfunded um, by some great people uh, that have helped us with it over the years. And the reason that we go to the Midwest like, why don't do it in North Carolina where you live? Because there's too many trees, okay? The Midwest is wide open, much easier to test the technology. We want to make sure that works and then go recover the thing after it gets to burst altitude. It falls back via parachute. We go pick it up and you test again. We have enough helium for three tests if we want to this time around. And so we're going to go to Dodge City, Kansas from Birmingham, Alabama today. We drove from Wilmington to Atlanta, picked up our colleague Brent, one of our crowdfunders also from St. John. My good friend Mike Farrow from Wilmington, North Carolina, known this guy since 1999. He's joining me. And we're going to go to, go to, go to, go to, bleh, going to, go to Dodge City, and uh, that'll be our base camp for a few days. And while we're out there, we'll zoom in over to Dodge City over here. Um, it's not that far from... Uh, you know, the front range of the Rockies. There's Dodge City there. This whole, whole area of Kansas, nice and flat, nice grid system of the roads. You know, grid, trying to make a grid there. You know what I'm saying. North, south, east, west roads, easy to get to where we need to go to pick that thing up after it lands. But while we're there, we're going to test some of our equipment. You know, there will be thunderstorms out there from time to time. Nothing widespread. We know that. We're not out there to storm chase necessarily. But... What if we do launch near Dodge City, and there's a nice cluster of storms over here somewhere, or maybe out to the west, and we put that balloon up to 100,000 feet above those thunderstorms, that would be kind of neat to see. So there's a little bit of intrigue there of what we might be able to do, um, and the front range of the Rockies, not too far over to the west, right? And we brought cameras to do some time lapse, some cinematography. You know, we're weather geeks, man. This stuff's exciting. And it gives us a chance to test this very important project that when we do it in the eye of a hurricane, like you see there, that was Harvey at landfall. Um, preferably not a Category 4, but whatever. It'll be extraordinary. Nobody's ever done it before, not in the daytime. We did it at night and Nate, but now I want to do it in the day. And it's an eight-year-long project, and I think this will be the year. Fingers crossed. So that's what the testing's for. You folks... We'll be able to watch everything we do. Our patrons on Patreon are helping to support this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have this really unique look through our vehicle cam. And we're doing some testing with one of our supporters down in Orlando. His name is Mike as well, Michael Cornelius. He has come up with a way to do overlays on the stream. We can bring in people via Skype. I mean, it's when you see this, this enhanced vehicle cam, if you will, basically our everywhere cam, we're going to leave this up pretty much the entire next several days. Free, if you will, for everybody. We want it out there for the public because it's supported by our crowdfunders. You understand? So that greater good aspect now comes into play. We're going to test some things with that, see what works, see what doesn't. But I think you're really going to like this new version of the everywhere cam, the vehicle cam, uh, on YouTube, and when we go live, you'll see it, and you can uh, chime in. The chat will be active. We'll have some moderators in there. And I'm going to warn you right now, I feel like Dad talking to his kids. Anybody goofing off in there, you're gone. I'm not going to have any tolerance for that, any kind of BS, and we're going to just throw you off the chat on, on the YouTube chat. Our Hurricane Track Insider chat for our supporters we never have a problem because usually people don't pay money and then become a you-know-what, so a troll or whatever. But seriously, on the YouTube chat, keep it under control or you're gone. All right? So there you go. I have to play dad here for a little bit. I got good experience with that, that's for sure. So there you go. I know this is lengthy, but it's Monday. we got a lot to talk about. 
And the beauty of this is, if you don't like to hear me talk for a long time, you can turn it off. doesn't hurt my feelings. But if you like all this and you watch the whole darn thing, you learn something. And I think this is pretty cool stuff, and I appreciate your support, whether you're a patron or you're just watching. It all matters. I appreciate it very much. It's good to have you along. So look, in a couple of hours, we'll fire up the stream. If you're following me on YouTube, if you're a subscriber, put that notification on so that when I go live, you'll know. You'll get a notification. And uh, we'll be streaming, and check it out, all right? Have a good rest of your Monday, and you know I don't want to say happy Memorial Day, because Memorial Day is remembering those that lost their lives for the greater good of the country. And for that, I am greatly appreciative, because it gives me the freedom to do this as an entrepreneur. So thank you to all that gave their lives over the last you know, 200 years plus in the service of our country. We remember those people today, and for that, I am grateful. Have a great rest of your Monday, as always. Thanks for tuning in to listen to me. And to watch me, I'm Mark Sutteth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll see you from the road as we travel from Birmingham, Oklahoma City today, and then on to Dodge City, Kansas.